Thank you, Steve. Um, so this panel is called Art and Protest in the Age of Muskrat Falls. Two formative experiences over the last two years have driven me to think deeply about the relationship between art and social justice. I've been hired as a lecturer on a cruise ship that circumnavigated Newfoundland and Labrador to discuss literature. Um, I was on the ship with the Inuk artist, Billy Gautier. I had an, in, an opportunity to interview Billy about his sculpture, and he is a traditional, he uses traditional Inuit carving materials such as bone and antler and tusk and stone, and his icono iconography was an exploration of both traditional and contemporary Inuit life on the land. Um, what really moved me about his work when we, you know, really spoke about it in a deep way was that he had done research into traditional tools and hunting practices um, of his people, knowledge that was in danger of being lost, probably because of, uh, you know, the residential schools. He was excavating this knowledge and use it, like creating in these uh, sculptures, the actual tools that had been used before, and and revisiting those technologies for hunting and fishing. Um, so I was deeply moved by that work. And while with him on that boat, you know, I w witnessed him pull an Arctic char out of the ocean and slice it up. And we're all on a zodiac, and he fed us, you know, little strips of it. And it was the first time I had eaten raw fish that it was pulled straight out of the water next to my elbow. And I realized on that trip, you know, where I saw uh, seal, flayed seals in the water being kept for uh, later eating, that people in, I, 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 of course I had heard it, but I saw for myself that people really do rely on that food source and that it is a tremendous part of the food security in uh, Labrador, uh, hunting and, and fishing. Um, so it was later when I was on tour with a, a novel I'd written going across Canada that I heard that Billy Gautier was uh, doing a hunger strike and that he had said publicly that he was willing to lay down his life uh, in order to protect that land. And I thought deeply about what that meant, that he had this deep and profound art practice and this connection uh, to the land and social justice. And it, it made me think about my own art practice as a novelist and wonder what I was doing, if anything, uh, concerning social justice. And with that same book, I had been touring in the United States. And I went to Atlanta, Georgia for a conference of young adult fiction writers. And I ended up in a restaurant with a big table of writers. And at my end of the table were five Native Americans who had just been at the Dakota Access Pipeline. They had come back from that pipeline. And the woman beside me, her phone was on the table, and it was, it was constantly buzzing. And she was checking it because she told me her niece, who was no more than 90 pounds, was on the front line. And they were turning water hoses on the protesters there. And um, she kept checking the phone to see if her niece was OK. And it was during that night that uh, a young woman um, lost her arm to uh, police bullets. And that text came through at that dinner. So both of these events, uh, experiences for me, when I was traveling as an artist, made me, forced me to think about the relation between art and social justice. If there is a relation, and how do we explore it? It seems as times grow darker and the gulf widens between those who live in precarity and the 1%, that artists are really struggling to find pathways to, well, to social justice, but also to simply showing us the world in new ways. Um, so tonight, and also I should say, to imagine compassion. 
I think, I think that is what artists are trying to do in these difficult and tense times. Um, whether we want to or not, I think that is what this work does. So tonight we have drawn together uh, a number of artists and, and a critic. <laughs> we got one critic. <laughs> um, and we're just going to look at their different approaches, very different approaches uh, to these questions. We're going to look at some of the artwork, some of the thinking, some of the criticism, and just explore what it means to make art that has been inspired by Muskrat Falls. We're going to look at uh, resistance, protest, and responsibility. <laughs> 